this is part one of the uh, lecture on chapter nine, Jesus uh, cleanses the temple. Uh, and we're going to begin with the um, Uh, we're going to start with um, the, the story uh, from the Bible. Uh, after this, so after the wedding at Cana, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and his brothers and his disciples, and they stayed there for a few days. Uh, the Passover of the Jews was at hand, meaning it was near, uh, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Uh, now, he's going southward. And he's going up to Jerusalem. Have we talked about this? Okay. Partly because it's higher in elevation, but even more because it's higher in terms of um, uh, it being God's God's holy city. So, uh, the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting there and making a whip of cords drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen, and he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned the tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal, zeal for your house will consume me. We'll talk about that more later. So the Jews said to him, what sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he said he was speaking about the temple of his body, his death and resurrection. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, and he believed in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. Uh, but Jesus, on his part, did not entrust himself to them, because he knew all people and, and needed no one to bear witness about him, for he himself knew what was in man. So um, after Christ's miracle at the wedding at Cana, um, we, uh, we see, um, we, we learn a little bit more about um, uh, that when we when we read John two twelve about his ministry in Capernaum, we don't know a whole lot about what happened uh, because it just tells us that he went to Capernaum. Um, but uh, it says after this he went down to Capernaum with his mother and his brothers and his disciples, and they stayed there for a few days. Uh, he had sisters too, um, not mentioned. So let's talk about Capernaum, because Capernaum is a very important place in the life of Christ. It is, in fact, where Peter King lived, um, and we'll talk about that as we go through. So here's where Capernaum is. It's right near the Sea of Galilee. So they've been in Cana, so they went northeast to get to Capernaum. Um, and the name means, uh, I think it means the House of Nahum. Uh, something like that, the village of Nahum. Um, and it became, it became Jesus' uh, headquarters, earthly headquarters, during his ministry. He would go back to Capernaum many times. And, and um, we believe that, scholars believe that, because of another story, that he stayed at the house of Peter uh, in Capernaum. Um, and I, you might remember the story about him uh, about, about Jesus healing Peter's mother-in-law, and they were at Peter's house. Uh, and and remember when, when we watched that video that it wasn't just a nuclear family in a house. And this is true all over the world. The idea of it's just you and your parents and your siblings in a house is very unusual in most places in the world. Um, you have multiple generations living in, in that house. And that was the case here. So um, this, this is a picture of the remains of the synagogue, um, an ancient synagogue in Capernaum. Now that would be, not that Jesus was in the synagogue in Capernaum. That would not be the structure that he was um, in when he was there. 
Um, but I'm going to show you another. That's that's also um, the same synagogue. And oh, I don't think I can. that's that's um, on the outside of this synagogue, um, under the white stone, there's black stone, black basalt. The reason why they believe that this isn't this wasn't standing when Jesus was there is because this kind of rock, this this white rock, um, does it, is, is nowhere near Capernaum. They would have had to bring it in. But the black basalt that what is beneath this that, that it was built on, that it is indigenous to the area of Capernaum. And that would have been um, the temple of Jesus. So he would have been on this spot, but it would have been a different uh, wouldn't it be so cool to stand somewhere where Jesus stood? Crazy, right? Um, so this is an aerial of, of the whole thing. So you see here the uh, the synagogue and um, and then the and then the village uh, and where the people uh, lived. And this is possibly the remains of Peter's house. Now, how do we know that? Or we don't know that. Why do they suspect that? Because obviously this spot was a place that people were near and where they worshipped in the centuries after. How do we know that? There are carvings on the wall about Jesus. Uh, and so... Uh, it appears that this was a place that was important in Christendom early on. Uh, and if this is where Jesus, when he went to confront him, where he stayed, then that would be very, uh, very much um, a place that people would be. So, um, so that is possibly, uh, we can't know for sure. But, you know, as C.S. Lewis says, the first thing we're going to say when we get to heaven is, of course, we'll know uh, whether it is or not. And if I'm wrong about any of this, uh, any anything I say, uh, when you know, that we can't know for sure, but I give a guess, and we get to heaven, feel free to trash talk me. And say, yeah, you're wrong about that. Uh, I trash talk people. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the time uh, of the event. So it's obviously it's the Passover. The Passover is near, um, and so let's talk about Passover. Passover, as I've already told you, is the most holy feast of Judaism. You tell me what do you know about the Passover? Yeah, Passover. Yeah, Passover. Yeah, Passover. Yes. I mean, it like started with uh, like Daniel. Yeah, so that's where it gets its name. The Passover, the angel of God passed over the houses of those who were Jewish. Um, but everybody everybody else's family lost the firstborn son. Um, what else do you know about Passover? Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of symbolism, there's a lot of foreshadowing of the coming of Christ. Uh, even to the, you know, the saving of people passing over. Yeah. Uh, did you guys have this as good? My son Lane <laughs> said one time, I wish Mrs. Bingham. Teacher, but I don't. I don't blame him. I. Uh, I wish Mrs. Bingo was. My How many you have? Okay, so she's not paying me to say that. Uh, so, the Passover was instituted to remind the Israelites of their Egyptian captivity and release. So now I'm going to go way back to Joseph, and uh, you know the story of Joseph. His brothers beat him up. They uh, sell him. They're going to kill the, him, but then they decide just to sell him because, you know, they're nice guys. And um, he ends up a slave in Egypt. 
And he does such a good job of serving his master that he uh, gets promoted and he keeps getting promoted and then he, he gets put in jail and then he uh, and then he interprets dreams and he ends up in front of Pharaoh and interprets a dream for Pharaoh and he ends up being the um, the number two person in Egypt. Nobody was greater than Joseph than uh, except Pharaoh. Um, and so as part of what happened and, and his dream telling, um, there was a famine and there was no food and it, and it came to, to uh, where um, uh, Jacob and his sons lived and so they, they heard that there was food in Egypt and so they went to Egypt. They didn't know. They thought, they thought Joseph was dead. Um, they all thought Joseph was dead. But they end up in Egypt in front of this man who's all dressed up in royal regalia, and they don't know it's Joseph. Um, now, it's just the brothers at this point. Uh, and when they realize it's jo Joseph, they're like, oh, no. But he doesn't. He takes care of them. And the whole family comes to Egypt. And the family grew, and it grew, and it grew. Uh, and to the point where um, there was... Um, um, there were too many of them, and they began to, in terms of uh, the the new pharaoh, the pharaoh that didn't remember what had happened, uh, started um, persecuting them. So um, enter Moses, right? And uh, Moses comes, and uh, after a brief argument with God, God won. He always does. So I will argue. Uh, and um, he brings with him uh, the authority to bring these plagues. Uh, God brings these plagues, uh, nine plagues in total. And um, the last one was uh, what is what the Passover. And, and you know, you know the story. Like he says, "Let my people go," and and Pharaoh says, "No." And then he says, let my people go. And he says, mm, no. And then he says, let my people go. And he says, yeah, okay. And now, nope, nope, come back. And he does that a few times. Uh, but then finally, after the Passover, and it was the, um, it was an angel of death. Some people say God passing over um, the families. And those who had the blood of a lamb on their doorposts, were saved. But if you didn't, your firstborn son. And Pharaoh then says, get out of here. Now, he chases them down, which doesn't turn out well for him. Um, but that's, that's the story. That's what they're celebrating. And as part of that celebration to this day, they celebrate the Seder feast, which is the, it, which is the meal that people were having during that time that the angel of death was passing over. Um, and every part of that Seder feast is um, uh, stands for something, represents something. They eat bitter herbs because of the bitterness of their captivity. Um, they, they eat this little, it's called caroset, and it's this kind of, fruit salad that's very hard and has nuts in it, like has apples in it, uh, and it's diced up, and, and it's for the mortar of the bricks that they uh, that they had to, the things that they had to build, and the bricks that they had to make. So every part of it is some sort of symbolism of the Passover. And and so after they are, are um, released from captivity, and they uh, and they uh, go to uh, Mount Sinai. God tells Moses, "You, this is the Lord's Passover. You will, um, you will celebrate this in perpetuity or forever." And indeed, they still do to this day. So I have no idea if I said any of this that's on here. Um, but it's to be, um, uh, it's to, uh, to remind the Israelites of their Egyptian captivity and release to be an annual event 
Uh, but the, here's this here's this thing that is interesting. I think. Um, by the way, one of the things that they they made I, I forgot to tell you this was unleavened bread. What's unleavened leavened bread? Yes. It's not raisin. Yeah, it has no rising element in it, right? There's no yeast or something that will make it rise. So it's so it's it's just not you know it's thin. Why? Why unleavened bread? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't have time. They had to get out, get out now. Uh, years and years ago when I was very young. Right over here. I was trying to help a young woman that was came from a very dark background. And uh, I bought her some groceries. She said she didn't have any groceries. She, uh, and we, I talked to her. She was going to get kicked out of her apartment. I talked to her about going to the open door mission. And they said, well, they bring my bird. And I called the open door mission. And they said, bring my bird. And so I went there to give her her groceries and get her, tell her the good news. At some point, and I don't want to go into details, I'll put it. She was planning to go back to her previous employment, which was not. Uh, and so when I mentioned that, and I didn't, I, I don't know what I said. I, mean, was, I, I wasn't mean about it. Um, she got really angry. And she just started screaming at me, and just yelling, get out, get out. If I would have known then what I knew now, I wouldn't have brought my. Um, so that's what it was like when when Pharaoh said, "Get out!" It's like, "Get out! Get out now, all of you!" Uh, and um, so they didn't have time uh, for there to be um, the, the the bread to rise. So here's this interesting thing in Exodus twelve eleven. Uh, God says to Moses, "It is to be the Lord's Passover." He was the one that was passing over, and it was his. And in John, John calls it the Jews' Passover. Now, that might not mean anything, because God is the one that instituted it, and the Jews were the ones that celebrated it. But if you tie that to what was happening in the temple, it does seem to be... Godless, that that um, the feast no longer held the importance and the meaning that it once did. I don't know if we can know that for sure, but it makes sense. So, um, the so to help um, overcome the convenience. Special dealers sold the necessary things they needed for the feast. They needed an animal. They need to, to sacrifice. They needed money, the correct money. It would be like, uh, I have some kwacha uh, at home that I got from Zambia. That's, that's the currency in Zambia. It's called kwacha. And if I went to Baker's and said, here's 20 kwacha that I covered, but they're going to say, no, that's not the right money. you got to give me the right money, right? So they had to get the right money for the, the temple tax. And it would have been extremely inconvenient, as I mentioned earlier, to bring your whole family with the animal and maybe an animal you need for milk and, and a second animal and all the stuff that you need to go to Jerusalem. It would be much easier to just get the family there and get everything you need there. Uh, we don't do this anymore. Uh, we will probably start next year back again uh, because my sister that lives and lived in Kansas City um, is now in Switzerland with her husband. They're moving home in May. But every year, my entire family, uh, so my three sisters, their husbands, and all our children, would meet in Kansas City for Thanksgiving. And I had some very specific rules. I was... Everything. So on um, from uh, on Thanksgiving morning, I make 
um, pumpkin pancakes from scrap. So there's no uh, I make pump, pumpkin fluff, uh, and there's things you dip into that, and it's like a, a sweet um, And um, I make pies. I'm, I make the pies, pumpkin pies and pecan pies. And I do all of that. I, I have to get all of the ingredients for everything I'm making there, like the pancakes. But then I, I make the pies, uh, and I make the fluff. And I get all the stuff that goes with it before I leave. Wouldn't it be so much easier if I could just drive down there and get what I need there instead of bringing it all here? Now, it wouldn't have be easy in a kitchen with 22 people also in, in that area and in the house. Um, but that's why, that's why the, the practice started, was for convenience sake uh, and uh, to help them. Um, and, and originally those shops and those money changers were outside of the temple, in, in the streets around the temple. But at some point it came into the temple grounds. And I'm sure that they justified it like, well, it's, it's way easier to do it. We have more room to do it at the crowded streets. It's more comfortable. Um, and so I'm sure that they were able to, um, to justify it. Um, but And there was always a, a constant market in and around the temple, but this was, was different. Um, and, and so um, one last thing, because we're about ready to be done. Uh, the Jewish treasury required every man, regardless of his financial condition, to pay a half, she shekel, half she shekel uh, tax. Uh, and because the region was under Roman rule, they needed Roman coins, and so that's why the money changers uh, were there as well. So what I want you to imagine here is Black Friday in the sanctuary of your church. That might upset you, right? Uh, so uh, that's it for today. I'll finish this up uh, in a video that we will play, uh, the sub will play tomorrow.